Such accurate words, such accurate words, such accurate words, such accurate words. Uh, perhaps uh, those are the words we should pass on to our next generation. <laughs> While things are changing, uh, perhaps we should let them know that God would never fail us. That is, that is July's focus. Uh, we have a focus every month. Of course, we, uh, this year's focus is pursue. We are actually pursuing all of who God is and all of what he wants us to be and eventually do. And so July's focus is a loving God who never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Too much bottom, Lee. Too much bottom. Too much bottom. A God who never changes. A loving God who is the same. So I, I know this song is very appropriate, and so let's share together in God's word, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. Man, I could listen to that all day. But since we don't have all day, uh, that, that is an amazing song. Um, God, who is so faithful. Man, I'm telling you, he is. Um, and there were times when I thought he wasn't. Because he didn't do it the way I wanted him to do it. But over time, I've learned that he's faithful. Um, as you find First Peter, it should be easy to find. Most of you have smart devices. Um, I still study with the pages, with the actual, with a book. Uh, uh, I just like that. I read from my tablet, but I study from uh, the pages. And so please bring your tablet, your smart device, or your book, your Bible with you because it's still basic information Amen. before leaving earth. <laughs> And so we stand together. We don't have but a few moments. I want to introduce you to uh, the focus for the month of July. Uh, it is really talking about God's consistency. Uh, in a world that where everything is changing, um, we have hundreds of, of television stations, cable stations. When, when, where I remember when I had three. Three, 10, 13, and we, then we, we stepped up, got 27. Uh, then 33, and I remember w w with, with uh, aluminum foil on my antenna, just so 27 and 33 would come in properly. But now, at a, at a, now, I walk in the house, push one button, my television comes on, and radio comes on, just one button, just push a button, uh, and, and, and hundreds of stations are at my disposal. None of them are really worth anything, but... Um, but... I need for you to understand that God doesn't change. Um, uh, he's the same. While his methods might, while his execution might, he doesn't. And so when you hear people say, this is new, you've never heard it before, you better, you better watch out because there's nothing new in word and his word, his word is there. And so people say, watch out, this is something new, this is, you never heard it before. It's just uplifting them that for some reason God gave them something he never gave anyone else in Old or New Testament. <laughs> There's a different way to express it. And so come on, let me just move forward because I want to get you ready um, and maybe in the month of August, we're going to start a, uh, a church school class called Discipleship. It's not training, but we actually want to get people more engaged in witnessing. Um, you have a story to tell, but some of you are afraid to tell your story. You don't know how. We want to have a class, a 45-minute class on Sundays from 9, 9.30 to 10.15. To we'll see the time. We'll let you know, get the word out. But we, we are simply recycling saved people. They're going from one church to the next, but we aren't, we aren't evangelizing. There are too many lost people who don't know Jesus, and all we're doing is saying, inviting other folks from other churches to come, but not the lost. So we want to take you through a series of classes. Uh, it's eight weeks, yes, eight weeks, 45 minutes to kind of help you witness 
to different people. So come on, First Peter, I'm on, I gotta rush. First Peter chapter one. Go to verse 24. I wanted 23, but, but go to 24. I didn't give him 23, but read 23 when you get home. I'll read 23 for you. And so you have been born again, but not to a life that quickly ends. Your new life, which is spirit, will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scripture says, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord remains forever. Ah, come on. And that word is the good news that was preached to you. This is awesome. This is awesome. It's, man, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word, I mean, y'all got to get with this, and that word is the good news that was preached to you. Amen. Take your seats for a moment. I want to introduce you um, to this text today, uh, especially as we try to embrace the consistency of God. Now, I don't want you to uh, misinterpret his method from his personality, from his ability. His methods may change, but God, who is all-encompassing, does not have to change. He's spirit. He is male and female, but neither. He encompasses both. We call him father. But many of us have also witnessed that God becomes a mother, a friend, a brother, a friend that's thick as closer than a brother. He has uh, so many attributes to who he is. It's God. That God must be seen as one who does not have a need to change because he is so great and he is so large. I want to share with you because 1 Peter is a letter um, written from one of Jesus' original disciples, Peter. Peter is a very uh, uh, unusual fellow in the sense that Peter has a lot of inconsistencies, but he has a zeal of God, but not always according to knowledge. P Peter is the one when Jesus Christ asked the question, who do they say that I am? And many of his disciples said that some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're Isaiah, some say you're Moses, some just don't know who you are. Uh, but then Peter speaks up and Peter says, I know who you are. He says, thou art the son of the living God. Uh, and Jesus says to Peter, uh, Simon Peter, uh, son of Barjona, the rock, uh, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven has given you a special revelation. So Jesus tells Peter that God has given you a special revelation about who I am. And then Jesus says to Peter, and upon your confession, not upon Peter's life, but upon your statement that I am that I am, that he says, I will build a kingdom and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Now, y'all got to stay with me because in that same chapter, while Peter has a great revelation, in that same chapter, Peter is then being told by Jesus, stay with me, that Jesus has to go away, has to die. Peter says, no, no, you cannot stay with me. You cannot do it. But then Jesus turns around and tells Peter, Peter, he says, Satan, get thee behind me. Because Peter is trying to block the assignment that will lead to death, but then to eternal life. See, you can't let people block you going through your trial. You want to always help people, but sometimes people have to go through their trials and their tribulations and their troubles in order to complete their assignment. Y'all stay with me. But what I'm saying that Peter shows great inconsistency on one moment, God says that you are, God has given you 
a word, a revelation. And then in the same chapter, Jesus says, Peter, Satan, get behind me. You're interfering with what I'm trying to do. So Peter has a life of instability, but a zeal. He wants to do better. He thinks he can do better, but apart from God. Peter finds out that I can't do any better because he then denies Christ three times when Christ tells him that you're going to do this. Peter said, it would never happen. One thing I've learned not to say is it'll never happen. I have said it's never going to happen in my life and it happened. It happened because I don't know all of what God knows. I don't know all of what God allows. I don't know why God prevents or permits what he could prevent. Y'all stay with me. And so this is Peter. Peter who denies Jesus. Peter who has a great revelation on one hand and then on the next hand, flip of a hand, God Christ is telling him to get behind me, Satan. Because Satan is using him to interfere with an assignment of Jesus. This is St. Peter who writes a letter. Oh, and the reason I'm, I'm spending time with that part, look at redemption. Look at how redemption works. The same Peter who rejects him. The same Peter who denies him is the same Peter who is writing a letter to displaced and persecuted Christians in what we call Asia Minor or our common day Turkey. Y'all still with me, church? Stay with me. There's some, there's some word in this thing. This text is important because um, it says people are like grass. Uh, and their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. For some of you, this text may seem somewhat depressing. Life is like grass. You're beautiful one moment, and then the next moment you die. Stay with me. Um, this text is not meant to be depressing. Um, this text is not meant to uh, simply insult your longevity. Uh, this text simply gives us reality. It, it forces us to see reality that people are like grass. Stay with me. Their beauty in the sense of who they are, not just their external, but also their internal beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass, stay with me, the grass withers and the flower fades away. This, this is about reality. I want to tell you why God gave me this text in maybe two, three mariner minutes. <laughs> um, because it is not depressing to me that my life will soon end. I don't know what soon is. Um, I don't, I want to be around a hundred years in my right mind. <laughs> but if God sees to take me a little sooner, um, I can honestly say that I have lived a wonderful life. I have been blessed by God, uh, and God has shown tremendous favor and love uh, toward the people that I know. Uh, I'm not trying to rush my life. I, I want to be around for a long time to see my sons and my grandchildren push me around if need be in a wheelchair, but uh, amen. I want to see my sons change my diaper as I change theirs. I don't want to, I don't want to be a burden, but they were a burden on me. I changed their diapers and everything that was in it. So I, I don't have a problem with them changing my diaper. I, I hear folk today say, so I don't want my burden on my kids. Well, they were burdens on you. <laughs> okay, I'm getting back to my point because you know, <laughs> um, people are like grass. Uh, they are beautiful, strong, vibrant one day, and the next day they fade away. Uh, this is reality, and, and I want you to embrace reality because Peter reminds us that everything in life, loved ones, uh, possessions, systems, accomplishments, friends, uh, and sometimes our hope uh, will eventually fade away. I mean, I, I want you to understand that. I mean, I need for you to hear that. I need for you to understand. Y'all slide down. Y'all slide down. Amen. I need for you to understand that, that some people, y'all just slide down. Y'all just slide down. See, if y'all just slide down, y'all, that's all you have to do, just slide down. 
so much. I did this one. So, oh, that's all y'all did to do is slide down. Y'all trying to figure out where I'm going to slide. Slide down. This is important. This is something because it's interesting because Peter reminds us of reality and I'm not sure if even believers can embrace reality when it is something they don't like. This is something, let me just share with you what God has given to me today because, because, because even your loved ones, your possessions, you know, I mean, come on, many of us have lost some significant people, but just because you've lost significant people doesn't mean you lose you. And what's happening is I hear oftentimes the church people saying, believers are saying, I can't live without them. And it's not Jesus they're referring to. Now hold on, y'all. Don't move too quickly because I'm not saying you won't hurt. I'm not saying that they're death, they're lost, they're walking away from you. We're going to cause you some pain or some damage. But you have to guard your heart so that even when they leave you or when they die or when you find that was what, what, what once was at top, now it's at the bottom, you don't lose who you are in significant ways. Just be, Y'all got to stay with me. Just because your figure changes doesn't mean you're any less than. Just because you can't do a split, hang from a pole, does not mean you are less than you used to be. Y'all, okay, y'all gotta stay with me. Y'all gotta stay with me. I mean, just because you lose some things in life doesn't mean you lose your significance. Mother and father are gone, but it doesn't mean I lost my Jesus. I am limping into my future, but I'm going into a future. So I want to share with you because this is important because, because Paul, Peter is really getting us to understand because they are dealing in this time frame with people who are telling them one thing and, and they're learning that the Gentiles are learning now and the Jews are learning now that people don't accept you just for being saved. They want you to do this. They want you to do that. And now, look at, look at this word, because I got three things to share with you. Because in this word, it says that, 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 that the word of the Lord remains forever. I'm trying to abbreviate this now. The, the word of the Lord remains forever. It says people are like grass. They change. Um, they die. They move on. They are fair-weathered fair people in your life. So don't get upset when you know they're fair-weathered people. Y'all stay with me. Don't get upset if you know there are fair-weathered people in your life. If you know there are fair-weathered people, then make sure you carry your umbrella. <laughs> There's no need of you being destroyed because of someone else's instability. That was a praise, that was a praise offering right there. So y'all ain't gonna pray. Praise offering. See, listen, it says people are like grass, they're beautiful, are like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. You can enjoy the temporary, but don't embrace the temporary as though it's permanent. Your job is temporary. You may have it for the rest of your life. And I tell you all the time that pastoring is not my purpose. Serving God and people, that's my purpose. Glorifying God, pastoring is how I express part of my purpose. So when I stop pastoring, I have not lost my purpose because my purpose is not in the function. My purpose is in the covenant. Oh man, y'all gotta stay with me. So if I stop pastoring, I still have purpose. If you stop being a CEO, you still have purpose. So gather, get that in, in your spirit. So enjoy the temporary, but don't embrace the temporary as something permanent. Now the next one, through spiritual wisdom, you have to discover the truth about your own limitations. You have to determine what you give attention to and how long you give attention to it. Come on, y'all. We have to learn how to identify who and what our total dependency is on. Is it God? Is it faith? Or is it people who can be fickled? Fade away. 
change on you at a heartbeat. And I don't blame people anymore. Because people would be people. So I learned the way to really love people is to embrace their frailty. At any given point, I can let you down. At any given point, you can let me down. But there's a God. Okay, y'all don't want to hear this. Um, this is important because you can expect people to be with you one moment, next moment they're unsure. You can expect to have a job today and perhaps next week you won't. I have a good friend who's a pastor, a prominent pastor. Uh, he was global all over the world. I don't just mean America, all over the world preaching and teaching. Had a stroke. Any given moment, anything can happen to you in life. So you can't place all of your eggs in baskets that are temporary. Unless that basket is Christ. Y'all stay with me now, church. Don't, don't leave me. So listen to this. I'm almost there. We can't always, listen, determine the type of soil or condition we have, been, we have to endure or engage in to grow. Now listen, the flower does not plant itself. Someone plants a seed in the soil. The flower's responsibility is to see if it can grow where it's been planted. God, y'all missing this thing. And if it does not grow because it's been planted in the wrong place, it gives you evidence that the one who planted does not know anything about agriculture because he planted in the wrong place. But that's not God. God knows about everything and everywhere. God, y'all gonna get this. So how do you handle life when you feel I should have been planted somewhere else? You have to learn and grow and bloom where you are planted because you didn't have a choice on who you were born to and what you were born with. But you have to make the most out of what God has given into your life. And so as this flower, this grass does not determine where it's planted, it simply grows. It hangs on to life and it doesn't do anything silly. It doesn't do anything contrary to what it's supposed to be. It just grows. Are y'all getting this today? You can't, you, you were born when you were born. You, you have the parents you were born with. You have siblings that you'd ask for, but you got them. <laughs> you, you, you living in a house that you didn't ask to live in, but you were living there. But those things will change. Because sometimes you feel on top of the world, and sometimes you feel the world is on top of you. Those are the changes we go through. I, I gotta close, I just wanna introduce this today to you because, you know, all flesh, everywhere is is human man is finite and temporal transient as grass grass is temporal is fragile and man woman boy girl will always have unexpected moments of instability I've learned to tell you y'all can go somewhere else let, let people fool you I can't be everything to anybody Or you're a pastor, you're a man of God. I can't be everything to anybody. And guess what? I don't expect anybody to be everything to me. Y'all not getting this. Y'all not, not getting this. I don't, I don't. People are too valuable for me to expect something that only God himself wants to deliver. This word says about God's consistency. I love, I, I, I love this word. I, I love, it says, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And Psalm 139, I love Psalm 139. Uh, 139, it talks about a timeless, valuable God. In Psalm 139, verse 8 through 11, it says, if I ascend up into heaven, if I ascend up into heaven, guess what? 
God, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, guess what? God, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the dark, listen to this, if I say surely the darkness shall engulf me, even the night shall be light about me. Because of God's infinite wisdom, his ability. You don't have to believe in me 100%. I don't believe in none of y'all 100%. But you have to believe in God. <laughs> Listen, everyone changes. Everybody will change. At some point, your loved ones, your friends, your BFF will one day disappoint you. But if you know that, you won't lose your mind and commit a homicide or suicide or genocide. Because you already know that people are like grass. They are flower one day, they blossom, but soon they move on. And that's their nature. But the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the word of God stands when nothing else is able to stand. I put my hope in Christ and I dare not lean on anything else. And the only reason I'm going to keep my mind stable of God's word. Not people, not money, not jobs, not careers, not possessions. But God, I expect people to sometimes disappoint me. And I hope you expect me sometimes to disappoint you because we are human beings. But God is the same today. Yesterday, as he will always be. If he was a grandma's healer, guess what? He's your granddaughter's healer too. I gotta close this past time, way past time. But many of us seek, we seek people to be more than they can ever be to us. And we don't hold God accountable. God accountable that his grace is sufficient. And every time I get to a place where I don't know if I can make it, I look toward heaven and say, your grace is sufficient. It's not by power, not by might, but it's by your spirit. It's not in me, Lord, to do it apart from you. But I know I can make it with you. For your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word it gives me life. It gives me a hope. It gives me determination. It influences me. Your word to do certain things, reasonable service. But you ought not expect them to do what God can do. Stay around forever. Be consistent forever. Always giving his best to us. Today, church, uh, is an introduction to God's consistency. His word will not return void because he sent it to accomplish something in your life. Pastor Jamie, come on. That's a, that's a prophetic utterance. <laughs> that's a prophetic utterance. <laughs> that's a prophetic utterance. Um, can, I, can, I, can I get you to encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank God for you. 
but you'll never equal God. Come on, come on, say it again. I thank God for you, but you will never equal God. Man, y'all didn't say no enthusiasm at all. Come on, say, I thank God for you, but you will never equal God. I want you around a long time, church. I want to be around a long time, but I know the reality does change. I'm not going to cry because my car is totaled. I got insurance. I can get another one, at least a half a car. I might can't get what I had, but at least I get, a, I get some four wheels. <laughs> All I'm saying is this. Don't let this world and the people in this world destroy you, depress you, when God is the only one to put your trust in. And you know Proverbs 3, it says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And what? And lean not to your own understanding. What? And, and all your ways do what? And he'll do what? Come on and put your hands together for the word of God. All over the house so we can rest on our feet. Come on. What a mighty God we serve. Anybody enjoy the word this morning? Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. Become a transforming partner with us. You can give at grovechurchva.com backslash giving or by texting your gift amount to 757-453-4373. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages that will inform and impact your life.